Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 22. In this power tip, we're going to look at three common air amplifier pitfalls. These are typical mistakes that a novice designer will make in an air amplifier design. Here are the three common pitfalls we'll talk about. Uh, the first one is miscalculating the air amplifier gain. The second is not minding the bandwidth limit of the air amplifier. And the third is introducing noise into the air amplifier itself. In this schematic, we're depicting the air amplifier within the power supply, and then we're depicting some of the compensation components around it. R1 and R2 form a voltage divider that are used to set the output of the power supply. The voltage that's out of that voltage divider gets compared to a reference that will be connected to the positive input of the air amplifier, and between the two of them, they'll generate the air signal. The common mistake that people make in this circuit is they include R2 in the gain calculation of the air amplifier at high frequency. Now this is not the case. Uh, the air amplifier has enough gain in it that the negative node of the air amplifier is at a virtual ground. And this creates no current flow into R2 and so its impact is zero in the overall gain expression. Another common error that people make in the design of air amplifiers is that they ask the amplifier to provide more gain than it actually can. What we have on this chart is we have three sets of curves. The green curve is the air amplifier gain versus frequency. The purple curve is what our designer asked the air amplifier to do, and then the blue curve is actually what it can do. And as you approach the gain limit of the amplifier, the amplifier simply cannot provide the gain and the gain goes down. This can contribute to excess phase delay in your compensator design and can result in an unstable power supply. A final mistake people make is that they introduce high frequency noise into the input of the power supply error amplifier. Here we're showing one of TI's control chips. Within the control chip, this FB or feedback node is compared to the voltage reference. This is a very high impedance node, and people sometimes get careless with high frequency signals within the power supply, such as the switch node of the output filter, and they will run traces associated with the switch node right across traces that are connected to the feedback pin and that injects noise into the control loop and the power supply will exhibit chaotic behavior if this happens. Uh, you may actually hear the, the sound of sizzling bacon. Well, thanks for joining me on this power tip. Uh, you can find a lot more power tips on the EE.com website. Just go there and search on power tips and then also in the description section of this video, there's a link to all the Power Tips articles. Thanks for joining.